To understand the story I'm about to tell you, there's a few things you need to know about me. The first is that I'm a city kid. I was born four miles from here in Bay Ridge, across the Navy Yard and straight down Third Avenue. There were no urban farms in Brooklyn at the time. It was not the Brooklyn of now. And there were no farms in any of the other cities where I grew up, London, Boston, Washington. The most I knew about how animals were involved in food was probably the pig killing in Little House on the Prairie. And the second thing you should know about me is that I was and still am crazy for animals. All animals, pretty much. I'm even okay with lizards and snakes. Growing up, I wanted to be a veterinarian, and I am still the person that you probably don't want to walk past on the walking trail because I'm going to want to pet your dog. Actually, all the dogs. I came up as an investigative reporter, I went on to cover science, and fairly recently I've begun writing about food, and that pretty quickly brought the parts of my life into conflict. Because here I was, someone who loved animals, having to come face to face with killing animals to eat them. Now, most of us are at least dimly aware that the meat we're eating was an animal at some point. But because we buy our meat, already dead and cut up, denuded of heads and tails and paws, we don't have to think about it as an animal shrink-wrapped into plastic, wrapped up in styrofoam. We don't have to confront that it ever had a parent or a herd or a mate ever felt the warmth of the sun, or took pleasure in a tasty herb, or felt fear, or felt pain. Some people, when they confront that realization, claim their meat-eating as a right. We evolved to eat meat, so we're stuck. They'll say, or... We bred animals to be meat, and they wouldn't exist without us. Or even... It's tasty. And some people, faced with the knowledge that they're causing the death of an animal, turn away from meat-eating altogether and become vegetarian or vegan. Now, I have vegans in my family and many among my friends, and I so much admire their moral rigor and their discipline. Meat is murder! They tell me. You can live without it. Only... I can't. I'm not even very good at being vegetarian. At some point, my body let me know I have to be eating meat. And this was, in all seriousness, becoming a burden. I understood I needed meat, and I loved the taste of meat, the mineral chew of a steak, the way that the skin on roast pork shatters like glass, the slippery richness of chicken fat on your fingertips. But the more I learned about how animals became meat, how they were raised, and how they were killed, the more troubled about my appetites I became. And then I went to a farm that changed my mind. It's called White Oak Pastures. It's in deep south Georgia, next to a half-empty town called Bluffton, not very far from the Alabama line. The first thing you see when you drive up to it is wide green fields, 3,000 acres of grass on a family property that goes back to the Civil War. And the second thing you see is chickens all over that grass, thousands and thousands of tall, sturdy, red-feathered birds that live on those pastures their entire lives. There are cows on the pastures, too, and goats and sheep and pigs under the pine trees and ducks and geese and guinea hen as well. The proprietor of White Oak is a guy in his 50s named Will Harris. 
He's the fourth generation of his family to manage the farm. When I first met him, he gave me a tour of the property by Jeep. We watched the birds strut past us, and the goats climbing up the trees to chew the kudzu, and the cows, which stopped next to our vehicle to munch on the clover, and then slid their heads in the vehicle and tried to nibble our sleeves. Will told me, this is my attempt at his accent. My animals, have a good laugh, right up until the last two minutes. But it was that two minutes that I needed to see. So this year, I went back to White Oak. I spent a week there. And as part of that week, I spent a day in their private slaughterhouse. I got up before dawn, and I rode with the chicken catchers while I collected the birds for the day. I went onto the kill floor, and I watched the birds die, watched them cease to be chickens and become chicken, bled, defeathered, cut apart, packaged up. It was difficult, but it was so different from what I already knew. On conventional farms, chicken catchers are infamous for scooping up birds upside down, three or four in each hand. At White Oak, they picked each bird up with two hands, one at a time. On conventional farms, chickens can spend hours waiting out their trip to slaughter, crammed into crates or in an open-sided truck barreling down the highway. At White Oak, birds never leave the property. Their trip to slaughter is a matter of minutes of a couple of hundred yards. In conventional slaughter, the priority is the line, the chain that takes the birds through all the stages of killing. It consumes 140 chickens a minute, and it is never allowed to stop. At White Oak, the priority was the birds themselves. Here's what I saw. Out in the fields, they placed just a few birds at a time in a box. They carried the birds into a room that was dimly lit to keep them calm. One by one, a worker picked each bird up and held it for a minute, cradling it almost. Then he turned it head down, fitting its feet into a rack. Its wings flapped out for balance, and while it was distracted, a second worker reached out to steady it and stunned it and cut its throat. They keep the kill floor cold as well as dark. I stood there a long time until my glasses fogged over and I couldn't feel my feet. I couldn't look away, not out of horror, but out of respect for the birds and for the workers who were treating them so gently. I realized it wasn't just a task those workers were performing. It felt like a ritual, almost like a sacrament, honoring the transition of animal to meat from a being living on its own behalf to one whose purpose was to nourish us. And because I stood there that long, bloody day and bore witness, I have no illusions now that I am eating animals, and also no difficulty, so long as they were raised like those birds were raised, and killed like those birds were killed. I look at the bare flesh of a chicken I'm about to cook, and in my mind, I cup my hands around its feathers. I raise the bird up, and I look at its eyes, and I say, Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>